Matt Williamson live from the owners' meetings in Orlando, Florida. All the buzz around the owner, owners' meetings. We've got comments from head coaches about draft trades potentially and new league rules being voted on. Do we like them? Do we not? Coming up on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks everybody for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We always appreciate all the everydayers out there and we appreciate everybody who subscribed on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast. Make sure you hit the notification, the thumbs up and all that. So you know when we have a new episode, which we bring every day on the Locked On Podcast Network. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right. Uh, owners meetings. What's the buzz? Have you uh, rubbed elbows with any owners? You getting any insight from all of the head coaches that are there taking panoramic photos and having breakfast with the media man? Yeah, it's a pretty cool environment. I, I kind of want to just paint the picture for everyone through my eyes, which is as a media person. So there is a radio row here. It's not nearly the Super Bowl or Combine where every team is representative, but I bet there's 12 to 14 of us there set up at you know these tables all in a row, which is more than last year, more than the year before. Every year it keeps growing and growing. And there's two beautiful hotels. There's a Ritz-Carlton and it's tied into the JW. And the JW's kind of for us media folks, the Ritz Carlton's for Jerry Jones and company. You yeah. know, so I, I, I was leaving to get my Uber and I got lost and I'm roaming through the Ritz Carlton and I saw owner after owner after owner after head coach. And I wasn't allowed to be in there. I have a media tag, but no one gave me a hard time, whatever. So that's where the big money hangs and it's a beautiful spot. And the JW, you just, like, and Radio Row, you see Tom Pelissero and everyone going past all day long, all the time. And right in front of us is a media room set up with saw Mike Sando and all those type of people there as well. They're in there working. But this morning is really cool. And tomorrow's NFC. Today is AFC. There's a big ballroom with giant round tables that hold, you know, like 15 seats around them. And there's 16 of them. And today, every AFC head coach sat down at that table and any media member from any market can come down and ask them questions. And it's like breakfast with the coaches. They had this great spread of eggs and bacon, blah, 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 or anything you'd ever want. So it's like a half hour, 45 minutes, give or take, where they just field questions. And that was this morning. And that's where all the blurbs you'll see are coming from. Again, tomorrow will be all 16 NFC teams. The day before that, Sunday, I think every team does this similarly, but this is how the Steelers did it, was they had a almost hour-long session with the head coach, Mike Tomlin, with only local media. So maybe there was only like eight or ten people in there. I didn't bother going, to be very honest with you. And he's a little more open and might talk about the picket situation a little more frankly and things like that. But, you know, everything's on the record, but it's only invited Pittsburgh folks. And then tonight, it will be the last little thing that peel back is really the highlight of it all, to be honest with you, in terms of fun, is the owner's party. And I've only been to one, the one in Phoenix, but a lot of media there, but every owner, every head coach, high-end executives. I mean, I've been told in going to the one that this is a million-dollar-plus party. I mean, there's an expensive band there's a sushi station, there's a carving station, there's any drink you want, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All the wives of owners and head coaches and some family members and a couple hundred people there. But Andy Reid was in front of me dancing to the band last year. You know I mean? Like it's just a real laid back environment, kind of off the record fun. 
You know, it's funny because there's probably a, a little bit of a dichotomy there between like ownership and and some of those folks that, that might be going to the caviar station and then some head coaches that are like, where's the domestic beer? So I wonder yeah, what right, that right. is like. Oh, there's a lot of that. Yeah, and you'll see you – know, if you pay close attention, you'll see there's a group of five coaches that are real good buds and they're in the corner doing shots of tequila or whatever. Yeah. Or, you know, like then, it, yeah, it, they're Williamson, just being buds. Williamson's in the other corner with the hot dog roller. Yeah, Maybe. Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah. But like at the sushi station, Bill Belichick could be in front of me. You know, and just yeah. everyone just kind of does their own thing, and it's pretty cool. Big sushi guy. Uh, Bill Belichick yeah. is – uh, famously, he's not here this year. Doesn't like to be involved in some of the things that happen, and even the photo. Drod Mayo in the photo, though. So I think we had all the coaches represented in the photo this year, which is always awkward and it's kind of funny to see what these guys look like. And when I saw the photo the first time, there's a couple guys like I don't know who that person is, and I had to think about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Eliminations, like, well, I know every other team, so that's got to be the new head coach <laughs> of the Bucks, right? Yeah. yeah. And so um, that's fun. But as far as the the breakfast with the media goes, the one well, there's a couple of quotes that stood out to me, and I saw them back to back, and it was Jim Harbaugh. And it was, uh, it was, who was the one that really stood out? Oh, yeah, it was Sean Payton. Payton, yeah, 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 yeah. And then it was Jim Harbaugh. And they were both speaking about where they sit in the draft and what could happen in the draft. And Jim Harbaugh said something interesting. It was the way he put it. He's like, he loves being at the fifth spot. And he's like, it's almost like being, it's almost like having the first pick in the draft. Kind of saying that, like, you know, we're going to get our, and we've already got a quarterback and quarterbacks are going to go one through four and we get the best player. That's not a quarterback, which means the best player we'd have taken if we did have the number one pick in the draft. I thought that hmm, was interesting. I didn't see that. What that is interesting. That? And then Sean Payton said when he was asked about the idea that maybe the Broncos could be a team that trades up for a quarterback. Cause we always talk about the Vikings and we never talk about the Broncos. We talk about them sitting at 12, what, 12 or 13. Are they 13? I think 12, 12. And then the Raiders are 13. And all those teams, 11, 12, 13 now could use a quarterback. And the and Sean Payton said, quote, I think that's realistic in moving up for a quarterback. I know the report suggested otherwise, but it's realistic. What's hard to predict, though, is what's on the receiving end. It's good to be Monty in Arizona today, talking about Monty Austin Ford, mm-hmm. the Arizona Cardinals GM. He didn't say it's good to be the New England Patriots. He didn't say it's good to be the Los Angeles Chargers, he said it's good to be Monty. So when you hear these coaches talk about things and they have been privy to conversations that are happening behind the scenes, really makes me think that we might have quarterbacks one through four in this draft. And I don't know if Sean Payton's and the Denver Broncos are the team that's going to move up, but if it pays to be Monty and they're going to get off of Marvin Harrison Jr., and that would mean that the Los Angeles Chargers are probably not the team that's trading out and they would get Marvin Harrison Jr. or whatever player they think is the best player in the draft. These things all start to come together and I tend to think that it is going to go quarterback one, two, three, four in this draft. So these coaches are great liars, massagers of the truth, et cetera. But when 16 of them are in the room answering the same type questions, and I think you laid this out well, it starts to become a little more clear what the league is thinking. And almost in the same light of Harbaugh saying, we have the first pick in the draft, I would think the Cardinals kind of have the first pick in the draft, where these three quarterbacks are going to be gone. We know that. And now I'm the one people are calling for McCarthy, and the Chargers don't want McCarthy, so they get the first pick of of the crew that they want. And I do feel like Denver, Minnesota, et cetera, et cetera, is banging on the Cardinals' door right now to get to four. And, okay, we'll listen to that offer. Thanks. we got some other people to talk to. We'll come back to you and just sort through it all and maybe get out of four to wherever and add a lot of stuff. Right. And they don't have to do anything now. They're going to sit there and collect offers and allow more and more teams to call them. And when the Minnesota Vikings call and offer their two picks this year plus the next year first, they got three firsts. And so Denver calls and they say, well, look, there's a team that's in front of you already, and we got three firsts there. So you're going to have to give us three firsts plus because we like the other offer better. And then it starts to snowball like that. So it'll be fascinating what team's willing to give up what the Cardinals might be asking. And the Cardinals have to move off of a really good player that they probably no doubt like and would like to take. And they already have an extra first-round pick. So you're going to have to make it valuable. And there's going to be future picks, plural, involved in, in one of these trades most likely. Mm-hmm. Real quick, I just want to throw this out there, though. I mean – 
I understand Sean Payton was hired to be the biggest dog in the building. I mean, he's the czar of football, and he's going to – if he likes a quarterback, he's going to get him, and no one's going to get in his way, and I understand that, and I appreciate that. And He's earned the right through his career to pick and choose his next quarterback. I just think from a team-build timeline standpoint, though, Minnesota's in such a better spot to go get a quarterback than Denver. Like, I, I, with all respect to Payton – Whoever would land there, I would say, is swimming upstream from the start. I mean, they haven't had first-round picks in forever. There's very little infrastructure in place. I mean, I would much, much rather land in Minnesota, no matter what, if I'm a quarterback. Yeah, I, I think everything points to Minnesota. With what yeah. they have to trade up, They, if everything's the same, there are a couple picks ahead of the other guys that might be trading mm -hmm. up. They that have, first is huge. Except for the Giants, because the Giants can move up just a little bit. And yeah, that's a good point. Get maybe one of their top guys, but um, the yeah the 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 roster. But the Burns trade hurts yeah. the Giants a little, you know. Like the, they still have their own second, but they don't have any other extra stuff. But still, they don't have far to go. But they don't have to give up as much to get there either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can still get neighbors at six. Yeah, and or and old. and if the if the Cardinals don't get what they want, they'll probably get something. Just not move down as far, which is still yeah. a great place for the Arizona Cardinals to be. So no, loop, job, basically. so uh, I agree. If there, if there was any lying involved with any of it, the part that's true is Sean Payton saying it's good to be Monty. I think it is good to be Monty right now. He's going to have a lot of fun in the next month. Well said. I think that's my biggest takeaway as well. Next, we've got more Intel from the owners meetings in Orlando and some new rules being voted on, including the banning of the hip drop tackle. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney, whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seat. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers at FanDuel get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, your favorite team in the final 16. You can even pick Who's going to win it all? And all you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. And of course, if you don't want to bet on college hoops, there's tons of NFL bets to be made. 2024 season futures. And of course, those draft props and every sport you can imagine. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. So Mike Tomlin speaking about his quarterback situation and Russell Wilson and Justin Fields in house now for the Steelers. What'd you take away from his comments? Because it wasn't quite as concrete, wasn't quite as hard line as Russell Wilson is the unquestioned starter as it was previously reported post Justin Fields trade. Yeah, he was very excited. I mean, a couple things. He, I, I deep down think they wanted to keep Pickett, and then when Pickett got uncomfortable, not want to compete, they said, get out of here. We're, we're, we're making a move. I think they wanted it to be Pickett and Wilson. That doesn't mean they like Pickett more than Fields, but you know they were happy with the bird in the hand. They had hopes for Pickett. And it was they, – they had so little hopes for Pickett that once he made it difficult on them, they're like, oh, well, then Done. later. Yeah, well, yeah, someone else exactly. can do that, and we'll get a higher upside guy to compete. Yeah. So I think they're very excited, very comfortable with their quarterback room, the age dynamic, the style of play, all those things. But I'm with you. I mean, when I listened to Tom, I wasn't at breakfast with uh, coaches because I would have had to get up at six as opposed to eight. And I didn't want to do that. And I wanted to sleep in. So I knew I was going to hear it all on tape anyway. Um, but he did say a couple things that stood out to me. And just knowing how he speaks, he said, Russell Wilson is the number one for now, you know, and he didn't say it was like guaranteed. It wasn't like how he talked about Ben, you know, like yeah. he's the starter, you know, pole position. I, I like pole the position. term he used pole position because that means there's an entire race to still be run, but he's mm -hmm. in the lead. He's in the lead side note. I'm infatuated with this F one series on Netflix, by the way, I'm almost through right. season five. I love it. I actually watched my first race from Buffalo wild wings across the uh, parking lot two nights ago. But anyway, Pole position is a wonderful start. I didn't realize how much of an advantage pole position is. 
it is a huge, you know, leg up on the competition. But it doesn't guarantee you get the checkered flag. And that's the impression I think that they got, that they're very happy with Wilson. They've interacted with him a lot. He's already spent a lot of time in Pittsburgh. But we're going to see. You know, we're excited. This we're, we're still meeting these guys. Ryan Poles on the other side of that Fields trade was asked about it, and he said that it was basically the hardest thing he's had to do so far as mm-hmm. general manager of the Chicago Bears, which I think is really interesting too when you consider the Fields trade with the Pickett's trade, how little they got, and you know the reports that there was more offers for Fields, but they wanted to do right by him, and this was the best spot for Fields was in Pittsburgh, and I tend to agree there, but it's very different in how hard it was for Ryan Poles to trade his guy and how easy it was for the Steelers to trade their guy. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, exactly. And maybe it's different organizations. You know, I mean, there's yeah. different history of the organizations, different experience levels. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't, hadn't thought of that dynamic, but yeah, we like our guy, but our guys acting up a little bit. We'll get your guy, you know, the the fields thing too, and, and I keep coming back to this, and I know we've talked about fields a lot, and, and it's always fascinating me because of you know pre-draft and, and that whole 2021 class. And Fields is so talented, and he's well liked and oh, by his teammates in yeah. the organization. It has leadership. Like for a guy that's that athletic, that has that arm, that has some leadership, that is actually trying to be good and still fail, because you know, it's not like Jamarcus Russell, or you know, it's not like some big injury where you know, you, you are not the same guy anymore, like RG3 or whatever. Like, to be that talented and or be trying... Or you were overdrafted and weren't talented enough. You know? Right, yeah. Like, yeah. It, it's it's he might be the first one ever to, like, truly fail if he doesn't become a guy ever that has that much talent that's really trying to be good, legitimately. So, from a objective standpoint, that worries me from a Steeler standpoint in that the league might think he has faults that can't be corrected. You know, holding yeah. the football... Field right. vision, you know, like I don't think I can coach that out of him, and I don't want to try. As nice a dude as he is, and as sound as he is, and how, how many offenses are so predicated on timing in the NFL? Right, right. He's not, not going to be that guy, even if he does hit. So I think yeah. there's fewer spots, which is why I, I like the Pittsburgh spot for him. I do too. I do too. And I guess um, he really looks up to Russell Wilson, and that seems like it could be a good dynamic. Uh, ear to the ground, Matt. Anything else you're hearing, rumors, otherwise, that you want to throw out there before we move on to the new rules that are being voted on at the owners' meeting? Uh, I would say the owners' party tonight will be better for that with a lot of drinks flowing with the right people. We've spent a, a little too much time at Buffalo Wild Wings because I can throw a Frisbee to it right across the the the, yeah. uh, <laughs> the neighbor over there. And I got in really late two nights ago, so we met people for like two drinks and then came back to bed. So. Haven't done a lot of flirting in the right neck of the woods. All right, so follow the martinis at the party. It is oh yeah, yeah. We're playing. I can't wait for that one. Um, hip drop. Belvedere, Belvedere martini straight up olives. Let's go. That's Here Williamson's go. starter tonight. Let's go. Let's do that. Starter and probably finisher at some point, depending on how many are are had. <laughs> they do kick you out kind of early. It doesn't okay. go all night long. There is a limit. So that's smart. That's smart. yeah. And look, get ugly. I I don't rub elbows as much as you do and i i'm not invited to such parties matt but i there keep are, my distance too i think now less than ever but there's a lot of folks in nfl buildings that will tie it on pretty good oh yes that yeah. will happen tonight i yeah. mean i'm not gonna out anyone but i'll let you know the level of partying because you could just tell last night everyone kind of reeled it in they had the breakfast early this morning don't go out everyone everyone had an early morning now it's probably like afternoon nap time, and then let's go strong tonight. <laughs> a big night, in Orlando. I <laughs> uh, hope you're uh, hope you're in a good headspace tomorrow, Matt. When we do our, I'd our be a little foggy, yeah. Talking Williamson. Let's talk <laughs> hip. Let's talk hip drop tackles. Let's talk new review rules and kickoffs being voted on at the owners' meetings next. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day and have to turn down the volume with all that shouting, uh, all the fake debates that are happening? Well, make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today. Uh, bring it's, I mean, it's can't-miss analysis. It's the experts on every single team in your favorite sport opinions. Analysis, news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, 
your team every day. And yeah, you'll see Williamson and Peacock and all of your favorite hosts from the Locked On Podcast Network on Locked On Sports today. Hip drop, officially banned Matt. Do you think it's the right call? And what impact do you think it'll have on the NFL? I mean, I'm an old school, let them play, you know, I mean, don't put a skirt on them, you know, the kind of mentality. Right. But I think it's the right move. I really do. I mean, because a couple of reasons, and I expected this to happen. Scoring is down. And I think betters, fantasy folks, new people to the to the NFL, you know, incoming kids that are learning to love it, want to see big plays, want to see scoring. I mean, they want to see fun. Scoring's down, so I think anything that favors the offense was likely to get pushed through. And from what I understand, I mean, I know it's really, really hard to be a safety or a linebacker and get these, you know, A.J. Brown, Derrick Henry to the ground with a head of steam without some help. But so be it. There's also a player safety thing here, and I do think, like, the rugby world has kind of figured this out long ago. And the NFL world, much like some other rule changes – We'll, we'll figure it out in the next couple of years. Well, that'll become second nature. I think it's fascinating because you bring up the rugby world and we've already seen, you know, the hip drop and, and, mm-hmm. and what they've done there. And there's a few places and there's very few places in the, in the world that can give us a, a glimpse into what the future of the NFL might look like. But one of those is the XFL and yeah. they've already had the new kickoff rules which I don't think this proposal for the new kickoff, which in past episodes we've gone into great detail of what, what it actually is. Um, they're trying to cut down, at, simultaneously they're trying to cut down injuries with the long runway for kick coverage teams while also trying to get more returns happening. And I love the idea of that. And I love that the XFL exists for no other reason than they showed the NFL that this is possible because I don't think the league would ever vote for this. if They didn't get to see it practically happening on a football field somewhere. Yeah, I think that's a great value of a place like the XFL. And I've thought that forever. I mean, since I've been doing podcasts, I've made the joke that if I was named King of the world, I would set up a minor league system for the NFL. And then I'd go on to like curing world hunger, you know I mean? And the, <laughs> and you know, that's a great, even if it's not a true minor league system, you can at least see things in place and in a facsimile of what it would look like and what are the glitches or how's it being coached around? What are the loopholes? And I also think things like that are great for developing young referees and things like that that people don't think about, you know, young strength and conditioning coaches, you know, things that you might see. All of it. All of it. Young PR, young, uh, Young people doing social media, like er- everything. Yeah, everything, right, right. Ticket sales, yeah, right, right. And, and a great place for people to get their start. And affiliation to me is huge. The NFL has to figure that out because I know covering the San Francisco 49ers that my listeners are hardcore. They listen every day in the offseason about their team. And if there was a football game on that had the very last guy on the practice squad, but he was a 49er and he was on their roster. Yeah they would tune in and right now they came out and i think that's something the league is absolutely missing is the affiliation and you'd get a question about him like is he better than our starting running back (laughs) we don't need McCaffrey anymore right yeah yeah i'd watch too it's the same as you know i'm watching uh i'm watching ball state you know i'm watching western kentucky i'm watching uh i'm watching yale football to see if this tackle is a is is someone that the 49ers should draft on day two Mm -hmm. right and uh, that's not something I would ever watch otherwise. And so the the pros- the the prospect of that player showing up on your favorite football team and just knowing your roster top to bottom, people can't get enough. And the NFL is missing out on not having that affiliation. And even bigger, like we talked about this before, Trey Lance needs to be playing football somewhere. He needs to put him on this right minor now. league thing. You know, yeah. uh, he needs to play. There's guys that need to play football. Yeah, and and I from understand that's what NFL Europe was supposed to be. I mean, I always talk about minors, you know, like the Penguins can call up a goalie before the Islanders game. That would be great, yeah. you know. I mean, NFL Europe, I thought they had it right. I don't yeah. know what happened there, and they're still either. trying to do so many things in Europe. I, I think that had an opportunity, and I don't know why it fell apart, but that was, that was the thing because it was spreading NFL football globally. 
And it also gave them that affiliation. It gave you a chance to, to mm -hmm. do all the things we're talking about. And then that, all that, that breeding ground. There opened up the opportunity for things like the XFL now. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, it shocks me it's not better. I mean, even I'm young enough to remember when the USFL showed up with Herschel Walker and threatened the NFL. And th there was worries that was going to be an NFL-AFL merger situation. But ever since, there hasn't been any kind of league to complement the NFL or be the breeding ground for the NFL. I mean, I don't know enough about basketball, but it sounds like this G League is great for that. You know, I mean, the, right, yeah. a lot of kids don't even go to Duke. They just go play and make some money and then come back over, you know. And I think the problem is, and I think it's the same with Major League Baseball, like you're not going to, it's not going to be a cash cow like the NFL mm -hmm. is, other league. But as long as it's not completely hemorrhaging, 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 hemorrhaging money, you, there's so much value there and you're helping your product. And uh, it, the NFL could kick it a couple of million bucks too. That's a drop in the right. bucket for them. It's okay. right. Yeah, it's okay if they do that. And at the same time, you would kill as long as it doesn't influence the party tonight. I mean, as long as it doesn't take. <laughs> <laughs> and if the NFL Europe existed, the XFL wouldn't even have a chance to try to steal eyeballs away. And it's not really yeah, the, right, right. the NFL, but. Do you think? I mean, I don't know. Maybe they should buy the XFL and make it that, you know, or whatever. Yeah. I think that's what the XFL is trying that's to do. That's what they want. Right. 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 And uh, so I guess for the NFL, they're like, okay, cool. Well, if a league figures it out and it's sustainable, then we'll be interested. And then they have the money to go buy it if that's the case, instead of trying to build it themselves. But yeah, NFL Europe, man, what what happened? That that make that happen, right? That was the thing. They had it, man. They were so close. There was one more rules thing I wanted to throw out too. I didn't know if you caught this though, but um, the NFL Competition Committee has now permitted to correct certain types of incorrect calls for roughing the passer in intentional grounding. I'm happy about that because some of these roughing the passer calls need to be reviewed. Yes. And uh, according to Tom Pelissero, the language of it is it's got to be completely objective. It's, it, you know, mm -hmm. it was the, was the hit on the helmet or not? And you can, yeah, yeah. you know, it's a yes or no answer. It's not. Uh, and, and he goes on to talk about how the league didn't want to have like one, one completely subjective, like, uh, idea from a, a booth official override another subjective ruling from an on-field official. So it has to be cut or dry. Was he in or out of the pocket or not? That's it. Was did it did, was the hit in the yeah. head or was it not? It's it, so it's going to be those types of things, and hopefully that happens quickly. Uh, another rule here, real quick, was, I said to speak yeah. from a referee standpoint. I think on that is now before that, I think that should I or should I not? I definitely should throw the flag. We're protecting quarterbacks. But at least now, if he's wrong, it could get re reviewed, you know, because I think the flags going to come out as regularly with or without this change of rules. But now the right call might get made either way. Right. And there's so many where you see a guy and they're like, oh, it looked like he did get him in the head from this angle. And then you mm -hmm. see the replay. Like, oh, he completely missed his head. He hit him in the shoulder or whatever. So, yeah, then you, pick you, that you, thing up. Yeah. I don't want refs though to throw more flags just because eh, it might have been, you know, I still don't want that either. though. All right. So, less reviews and less flags in total if we can if we can somehow figure that out but those 15 yard penalties are huge especially if it should have massive. never been a penalty in the first place uh, another small rule that has passed uh now if you win a challenge you get a third challenge yeah that makes sense to me like why would you lose something that you made the right choice on as soon as i read that i'm like oh that's your pass and i think there's a couple others um, oh yeah. So this is just, a, it's just worded differently. It's so this is the drip, the hip drop, uh, bike competition committee amends rule 12 section two to eliminate a potentially dangerous tackling technique. So that's what it says in the rule book about the, uh, the hip drop tackle. So that's where we're okay. at. So yeah. Appreciate Tom Pelissero, uh, your buddy there. Tell him I said, thank you for all the tweets telling us what's going on in the national football league. Uh, if you see any of our everydayers out there, let them know. Say hi. Uh, if you rub elbows with uh, uh, Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch, let them know that I'm still waiting for them to uh, jump on Locked On 49ers with me as a guest. And, of course, anything you hear after a couple martinis, we want to hear about it as well, Matt. So we'll be talking to you about that stuff later on in the week. We've got a lot of draft rankings to come as well on Peacock and Williamson. And we'll be back tomorrow, as we always do, right here, Peacock and Williamson.